Hola everyone, I'm Teacher Kim from AIA. Do you mix up the words ladder and later? Well, don't worry. In this video, we will be learning the differences between similar words and how to use each one correctly. Let's begin. Every day versus every day. I see you every day. I miss you every day. I mean, this isn't an everyday thing. This is my, um, my everyday attire. Here's the first question. If you want to say in English, would you write it as A, I go swimming every day, or B, I go swimming every day? The correct answer is B, I go swimming every day. I know what you're thinking, they sound the exact same. And they do, but they mean different things. The meaning changes depending on whether it's one word or two words. Every day like this has a space and is an adverb. That means on all the days. In Spanish, this translates to todos los días. I see you every day. I see you every day. I miss you every day. I miss you every day. While the solo word every day without the space is an adjective used to describe something that happens daily or on a regular basis. It means ordinary or typical. In Spanish, this means derario or diaria. I mean, this isn't an everyday thing. I mean, this isn't an everyday thing. This is my, um, my everyday attire. This is my, um, my everyday attire. Ah, te quería mencionar que acabo de hacer, acabo de terminar un nuevo entrenamiento 100% gratis para enseñarte 7 trucos para aprender inglés más rápido, para hablar más fluido. Ahora mismo puedes bajarlo con el enlace pegado en el primer comentario. Angel versus angle. Beth is like an angel. Face like an angel. That's a nice angle. We have to check every angle. Here's the next question. If you want to say in English, would you say, A, you're as beautiful as an angel, or B, you're as beautiful as an angle? The correct answer is A, you're as beautiful as an angel. So these two words, angel and angle, seem very similar, but they mean two completely different things. The word angel spelled A-N-G-E-L, refers to a spiritual being of God or someone who is very kind and helpful. If you wanted to say this in Spanish, you would just say Angel. Beth is like an angel. Beth is like an angel. Face like an angel. Face like an angel. Now the word angle, spelled A-N-G-L-E, refers to the space between two intersecting lines. In Spanish, you would say angulo. That's a nice angle. That's a nice angle. We have to check every angle. We have to check every angle. As always, please remember to pause to practice and comment below if you have any questions. Later versus ladder. See you later. I'll talk to you later. This is the ladder. Don't be the ladder. Now for the next question, if you want to say, would you say A, let's have some coffee later, or B, let's have some coffee later? The right answer is B, let's have some coffee later. I know these look very similar, but not only are they pronounced differently, but they're spelled differently too. The word later is an adverb used to refer to a time afterwards or after a point of time in the present. It translates to más tarde in Spanish. To use later in a sentence, you could say, I'll call you later. See you later. See you later. I'll talk to you later. I'll talk to you later. While the word ladder is a noun used to refer to something happening near to the end of something. Ladder can also refer to being the second or last option. In Spanish, ladder translates to ultimo. For example, you're disciplining your child and you say, you can either be mean to your sister and get in trouble 
or being nice to your sister and not get in trouble. If I were you, I'd pick the latter. Notice how later has only one T and ladder has two T's. This is the latter. This is the latter. Don't be the latter. Don't be the latter. A lot versus a lot. We just missed you a lot. Thanks a lot. Only 600 tickets were allotted. How many minutes have you allotted? Moving on to the next little quiz. What does this mean in English? Does it mean A, you have a lot of work to do, or B, you have a lot of work to do? The correct answer is A, you have a lot of work to do. So yeah, this one is a little tricky, but there are key differences to pay attention to. A lot as two words is used as a quantifier which means a large quantity. So in Spanish, it means mucho or mucha. We just miss you a lot. We just miss you a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Now a lot as one word is a verb that means to set aside for a specific purpose. So in Spanish, it means asignar. Only 600 tickets were allotted. Only 600 tickets were allotted. How many minutes? Have you allotted? How many minutes have you allotted? Breath versus breathe. Take a breath. Now hold your breath. Honey, breathe. Breathe. Here's the next one. So if you want to say, would you say A, take a deep breathe, or B, take a deep breath? The answer is D, take a deep breath. Although they are spelled similarly, they are pronounced differently. Breath is a noun that refers to a full cycle of breathing. So in Spanish, it means respiro or respiración. Take a breath. Take a breath. Now hold your breath. Now hold your breath. Now breathe is a verb we use for the process of inhaling and exhaling. So in Spanish, it means respirar. Again, breathe is a verb while breath is a noun. Honey, breathe. Honey, breathe. 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 Fourth versus fourth. I skipped fourth grade. Sorry. I need security on the fourth floor. Go forth. We must journey forth. Moving on to the next little quiz. What does this mean in English? Does it mean A, mine is the fourth house on the left, or B, mine is the fourth house on the left? The correct answer is A, mine is the fourth house on the left. This is also another common mix-up. The word fourth, spelled F-O-U-R-T-H, is an adjective referring to the ordinal form of the number four. In Spanish, it means cuarto. A couple examples of using fourth in a sentence are, April is the fourth month of the year, or this is the fourth time I've been to America. I skipped fourth grade. Sir. I skipped fourth grade. Sir. I need security on the fourth floor. I need security on the fourth floor. As for the word fourth, spelled F-O-R-T-H, it's used as an adverb that means onward or outward in place or space. In Spanish, it translates to adelante. For example, my dad went forth to London for an art exhibition. Go forth! Go forth! We must journey forth. We must journey forth. All together versus all together. That's 60,000 altogether. Let's stop talking about it all together. All together now! All together now. Here's the next question. What does this translate to in English? Would you say it means A, that'll be $52 altogether? Or B, that'll be $52 altogether? 
The answer is B. It'll be $52 altogether. This one is also kind of difficult. Altogether as one word refers to something that is complete or encompasses everything or everyone. It can be used in place of the words wholly, totally, or all in all. So in Spanish, it means en total or por completo. That's 60,000 altogether. That's 60,000 altogether. Let's stop talking about it all together. Let's stop talking about it all together. Now, all together as two words refers to all the members of a group or everything gathered in the same place or at the same time. In Spanish, this means todos juntos. It's also important to note that when we use all together as two words, we're usually talking about people or animals. For example, a choir teacher telling their students, okay, now let's sing all together. All together now! All together now! All together now! All together now! If versus weather. We're going whether you like it or not. You know whether you love me or not. Let me know if I can get you guys anything. I don't know if I can do this. Now, help me translate this. Does it mean A, I'm wondering whether or not to buy this, or B, I'm wondering if or not to buy this? The answer is A, I'm wondering whether or not to buy this. So I can see how these words get mixed up because both the word if and the word whether mean C in Spanish. But luckily, these two words look different and are used differently in English. The word if is always used in sentences with conditions. So, for example, if you work out every day, you will become more fit. Let me know if I can get you guys anything. Let me know if I can get you guys anything. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Now, the word weather is used to present options or possibilities. For example, whether it rains or not, I'll be there to pick you up. Now, it wouldn't make sense if you said whether you work out every day or not, you will become more fit. Because you might not become more fit if you don't work out every day. That's why the word if is used in sentences with conditions. We're going whether you like it or not. We're going whether you like it or not. You know whether you love me or not. You know whether you love me or not. Well, that's a wrap for today's lesson. We've covered the differences between similar words and how to use each one correctly. Oh, and in the comments below, let me know how you did on all the quizzes. Remember to practice these words and like or share this video. Feel free to check out our other free videos and courses that can take your English skills to the next level. If you have any questions about this lesson or have any ideas on what you would like us to teach next time, leave us a comment below. And of course, if you wanna keep learning with us, hit the subscribe button and be sure to turn on notifications. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Teacher Kim, and we hope to see you in the next video. Adios!